Okay, so here we are in Fedora 16 desktop. And the first thing people ask is, what are the actual changes in the desktop or user experience over Fedora 15? And to be honest, you need to look really hard to see any difference at all. So for those of you unfamiliar with Fedora 15, if you hit the option key, otherwise known as the Windows key, you can go to the activities area and from here you have your favorites, very much like the Unity taskbar down here where you can launch your favorite applications and you can add applications here and you can remove them or you can move them around in their order. Um, there are two views in the activities area. There are the windows, because we haven't got any windows open here. Um, and we have the applications which is where you can search for any installed applications here so if you want to look for Caden Live there it is but that's all exactly the same as it was in Fedora 15 in fact the only change that you'll notice really is up in this taskbar at the top here so again if you go across this menu bar you've got the calendar and again you can open the calendar you can see what has been scheduled for the day you can go into your calendar application which in this case is evolution by default and uh, you can add appointments and change them um, you've again got the accessibility menu here where you can change the uh, the way the windows look to make them more visible again you've got the sound settings menu again no change there um, Bluetooth don't use that anyway your network settings again no change so we're starting to wonder where, where the differences are and the only difference really is on this final menu the user menu at the end here what they've done is they've rejigged some of these options here and put them all up into a single area at the top here so you've got your chat status here you can change it to available um, if you click on this here we've got a we've got now an icon for the user who's generally logged on and if we click on that we can change the various uh, privileges and setups for this particular user but that's that's not new it was just a different setting of the menu so really the only difference you're going to see is this slight layout on this final menu thing and that's really all there is to the desktop experience there are a few extra alerts and things which pop up at the bottom here but again that's not particularly new that's uh, it has been expanded a little and you'd be hard pressed to guess whether this was Fedora 15 or 16 and that's because virtually all the changes in Fedora 16 have been under the hood so in the way that the system works and interacts the different components it uses it's been updated to use newer technology things have been rejigged and expanded but for the general desktop user certainly the home user you're not going to notice any difference at all um, the only proviso there is if you were running certain applications that were having problems under Fedora 15 um, because of all the changes behind the scenes you may well find that um, those problems have been fixed in the latest release because of the amount of work that have been going on behind the scenes but um, otherwise the desktop experience is going to be indistinguishable from, from Fedora 15 okay so what are the main differences between Fedora 15 and 16 well as you can see pretty much all the changes are made under the hood the only really perceptible difference to the user is the upgrade of the desktop from GNOME 3.1 to 3.2 but as we've already seen in the demo they really are indistinguishable so what other changes have been made? Well, the Linux kernel has been upgraded to the latest version, um, but that's not a really huge difference there. The bootloader has finally been updated to Grub 2 from Grub 1. Again, users are really not going to see too much of a difference there. Um, if you use virtualization, there's been a lot of improvements in that area, so that might be one reason, reason why you would want to upgrade to the latest release. Um, there's also been increased support for cloud mode so again if you're a big cloud mode user then uh, that may be a reason for moving to the new release 
Okay, so let's take a look at the default applications here. They are pretty much the same as uh, Fedora 15. So I had a quick uh, test of a couple of them, Firefox and Evolution, and they seem to work fine. I would expect pretty much all of these to have been well tested during the alpha and beta. So I think you can pretty much rely on all these working fine. Um, at the same time, I took a look at some of the uh, other applications that I regularly use and did some basic testing on them. So to basically check that they opened up, that I could pull a file in, do some basic functions and quit out without an error, and they all pass with flying colors. So I'm not saying that every function is going to be 100% working here because I haven't tested it all. Um, but the basic operation seems to be there, so I'm not expecting any real surprises. Okay, so why would you want to upgrade to Fedora 16? Well, the first reason would be if you're moving to Fedora for the first time. There's no reason why you wouldn't want to go straight to the uh, the current release. Second is if you're an existing Fedora user but you're experiencing problems with your current release, uh, you might want to upgrade to Fedora 16 to see if your existing problems are fixed. Um, there's been, as I say, there's been a lot of work behind the scenes in the guts of the system, so there's a good chance that any problem that you had in a previous release have been fixed by now. The third reason is if you're an early adopter of new technologies and you're willing to take the risk um, of a brand new operating system that's only been out for two weeks. So in summary, there's nothing in the user experience to make upgrading to the latest Fedora particularly desirable. There's nothing, no must-haves in the user experience. In fact, it will be pretty much indistinguishable from Fedora 15. And that's because virtually all the changes are under the hood. So in the guts of the system, there's been a lot of work, but at the user level, you're not even going to notice it. The other thing to note is that in the two weeks that it's been out, there's no major problems being reported, so that is a good sign. Um, there were a couple of problems reported with people having problems with video drivers, and um, I've also seen reports of problems with people upgrading from Fedora 15 or below up to 16, but those are common problems with all operating systems and all releases and uh, that would be nothing special with Fedora 16. So if you can, you probably want to try a fresh install of Fedora 16 and then just refresh data to avoid any possible upgrade problems, but um, that's nothing special.